Okay, so that's called the saddle path. An economy has a saddle path. It's the point where, you know, whatever point we start, if we start with this initial level of capital, we're going to choose our consumption level to be right on the saddle path. If we start with this level of capital, we're going to choose our consumption level to be on that path. So we're always moving towards this steady state. And it's called, I guess, the saddle path because it's kind of the happy middle between the Ponzi scheme direction and the suboptimal uh, consumption direction. If we started with a suboptimal level of consumption here, what would happen is we do this. Boom. But we get the same, uh, uh, same argument. I'll tell you why that's not optimal. You can get more consumption on every point by choosing a little bit less uh, savings. Okay, I think this is the last slide with any content on it. Let's think about what happens if we were to uh, have a fall in the discount rate. Okay, so recall we have two equations here uh, that give us, we have one equation that gives us c dot zero, and we have one equation that gives us k dot zero. And you'll recall that k dot zero is simply equal to, I'll just write it here. I'm going to omit the t's just so I don't have too much notation. So k dot is going to be equal to f of k minus c uh, minus break even n plus g times little k. Okay, note that in this expression, we don't have any row. Okay, so we change row, we don't change anything about the k dot level. Okay, what about c dot? So I'm going to get it wrong here, but I think little c, we got c dot divided by c, it's equal to rho. Oh boy, I'm going to screw it up, so I better flip back a couple of slides. This one. Okay. See, look, I did screw it up already. F prime of kt minus rho minus theta g. f prime of k minus rho minus theta g divided by theta. Okay, so note we do have a row here. So when we increase, uh, we have a fall now in the discount rate. If we have a fall in the discount rate, it means that we're going to be moving the c dot line to the right, right? If we have a fall in this discount rate, we have something that's less negative now. So people become more patient and uh, we're gonna have sort of a new level of K star that's going to involve more saving or a higher level of steady state capital stock. Okay, so there's a couple of things that are interesting about this. Note that uh, we're actually increasing the level of steady state consumption, just like the solo model. We're actually not at the top of the, uh, uh, we're not at the golden rule level of capital stock. Uh, so, in the steady state, we're going to have more consumption. But what happens at the moment when this C dot zero line moves? Well, suddenly we're now at a different point on this saddle path. We're at a very low point. So people are going to start saving. So consumption is actually going to drop a lot at the moment that that discount rate falls. But then it's going to grow up to a new uh, steady state. Okay. So, I mean, I think we talked about this a bit with the uh, solar growth model as well. One other interesting thing to note here is that we're talking about the situation where, where we're on the left-hand side of the golden rule level of uh, capital or the golden rule level of savings. It's, it's a little bit harder to talk about the golden rule level of savings since savings uh, rates change along the, along the saddle path. But, um, but you know, we could increase consumption uh, by steady state consumption by moving even farther to the right. It turns out that at this model, and I'm not going to prove this here, uh, all equilibria are to the left of the golden rule level of, uh, of capital. So anytime we decrease the discount rate, whatever we decrease it to, um, we're always going to remain on the left-hand side. So it's, it's always going to lead to more consumption in steady state. If we make people more patient, they will always consume more in steady state. Um, and I think that actually might even be a problem in the book, I'm not, although I didn't assign it. 
Okay, so that was a pretty intense chapter. Uh, so what we're going to do next time is we're going to do sort of another generalization or another different take on this type of model. I mentioned it briefly earlier in the lecture. Um, so at the moment we had this trick where we said that the number of households is fixed, but the amount of workers in the household grows over time. That allows the household to sort of plan, you know, they care about the future workers, so they sort of plan to give them consumption. Okay, we're going to think about a situation that's maybe more realistic, where each generation, well, I don't know if it's more realistic, but it's like the diametrically opposite assumption, where each generation doesn't care at all about the next generation. They only care about themselves. Um, and we're going to see how that affects the uh, conclusions of this type of model. It's also a very standard model to think about pension savings and, and things like that, where uh, intergenerational transfers are important.